I'm just setting up the recording here and then we're ready to go. So please bear with us, anyone who's waiting. Okay, so I think we're ready to go. So hi everyone, um, welcome to our first ever webinar with Dulux and with Amanda. Um, this is going to be all about color and color scheming today. My name is Brona White. Um, I'm also joined here by my colleague, Zach, who's gonna help out with co-hosting this event. Um, so our panelist today is Amanda Daunt from Dulux and Amanda is a color consultant. Some of you will have met Amanda before at in-store events or may have uh, spoken to her on Facebook takeovers that we've had in the past. Um, Amanda has a wealth of knowledge about colors and about Dulux and uh, we're delighted to have Amanda here today to share her knowledge and expertise with us. So thank you, Amanda. Thank you. So before we start, just a few things. Um, we should be finished by about 12, we're guessing. It depends on, on the questions that come in. The webinar is being recorded, so we will be able to um, share it afterwards on social media through our website. There's an option for you to submit your questions, which is at the bottom of your screen in the Q&A. So while Amanda is doing her presentation, you may think of things that you want to ask her. So we'll go through those questions at the end and we'll answer as many as we can. And we also have a few questions that came in by email from a few of our customers as well. So that's it. Um, Amanda, I'm going to hand over to you. If you would like to do a screen share there so we can see your slides, that would be great. Thank you. Sorry there, it's just not uh, sharing. It was sharing two minutes ago. So no, I'm just going to cancel the share again. Sorry. That's OK. I can share there we if go. you can't do it. No, oh, no, we're perfect. fine now. So apologies Great. about that, everybody. Thanks, uh, We had loads of practice runs and, and uh, things can just give trouble last minute. So thank you so much, everybody. Um, delighted to be here. Um, I'll just give you a little... I suppose synopsis about uh, where I've come from um, in the past. So I have been working with Julux as a colour consultant for five years now and uh, prior to that I was originally a fashion and a knitwear designer many years ago. So I've worked with uh, colour all my life and uh, Subsequent to that, I worked with retail for Debenhams in uh, their their stores all around Ireland and in secondments in uh, India and Cyprus as well, doing everything visual design for them from windows to stage sets to, to room uh, takeovers in their stores. So colour has been a fundamental part of my life, um, right through from choosing fabrics to yarn to choosing colours from paint and obviously to choosing beautiful um, items to display in windows. So hopefully today, will give you some inspiration um, in terms of not only thinking about paint for walls, but also thinking beyond the walls in your home and where else can you get colour into timber, onto furniture, onto different surfaces other than your wall structures. So we'll start the, um, the uh, shot now and um, we'll take it from there. So I'm going to go through um, how you can make colour scheming really simple today and keep it very basic because a lot of people um, from our various um, consultations online and in store have lots of the same questions all the time that are popping up and the first thing is where do I begin with any room, uh, be it a new build, be it a renovation project, be an individual room in itself, where do I begin um, with a colour scheme? So the first essence to beginning anything is understanding the colour wheel and how it actually works. So I'm going to go through three of the very simple scheming processes today. There are many more, but I want to keep it as simple as possible. And that is the tonal colours. OK, so any colour wheel, we start with tonal, harmonising and contrast contrasting colours. Your tonal is working from your lighter shades at the top of your colour wheel right down to the, the darker to the lighter and all the tones in between. So that's the very simplest essence of any colour scheme is a tonal colour scheme. Very difficult to get wrong if you stick with it in practice. Harmonising our colours that sit beside each other 
on the same wheel. So your lilac with your blue, your pink with your deeper pink, your purples. And then your contrasting is more braver um, and it's breaking the boundaries a little bit in terms of being braver with colors. So again, it's any color that sits across from each other on the color wheel in any direction. So to, to go through a, co a tonal colour scheme, these two images, I think, reflect it really well. And in this image, we've used our darker colour being our pure cloud from our signature collection, which is a beautiful range of colours. And I'll go through that in more detail throughout the presentation. But pure cloud is used here as our accessories. So the throw on the bed, the beautiful headboard, the beautiful occasional chair, and even goes into the bedside lamp, where we've used mid cloud as the walls only and then there's subtle cloud for the floorboards and for the bed linen. The same applies to the next um, image. The darker colours are used in the furniture, the woodwork, the wooden panelling on the doors, the mid-tone for the wall and the lighter one for the um, coving. So harmonising, probably one of my favourite images in this whole presentation is this image here, which I think reflects harmonising really well. So you're going from a deep, almost purple navy into a, dark, a, a lighter blue, into a lighter element of purple. And all the walls, skirtings, trims, doors are done in the one colour. So very, very on trend at the moment. The other image, again, wooden panelling is so huge at the moment for painting. And again, this is our lovely heartwood colour from 2019, worked with a beautiful blush pink um, uh, colour. And lastly, on the contrasting then, um, where you can be bold and brave here. So here in the exterior of a building, bright orange works with a turquoise blue. Not so brave here, but yet a beautiful mustard colour working with an off white. And again, all it needs is a punch of colour for a contrast to work. So working through a three colour palette, and I'm going to go through that using our signature collection. Um, that's a beautiful range of 96 colours beautifully curated. Um, we have dark accent colours, we have light um, colours, we have beautiful tonal shades all through here, working into deeper shades here. Again, you can mix and match from one palette to another and over to here as well, which are more braver, some lovely off-white. So there's 96 colours in total that can be painted um, on any surface, so between wood and walls and can be mixed into different paint finishes. So a really good versatile palette to start with actually for any colour scheme. Just uh, on that then is the um, three step process to running a colour palette using your signature collection. And I've chosen here pure shadow to mid shadow to subtle shadow. And just to go through that in a little bit more detail. So when you're looking at a scheme for a room, you need to consider what's in that space first. What am I keeping? What am I retaining in that space? What am I willing to let go? What can I recover? What can I upcycle? Is the flooring staying? Is my sofa staying? So all those elements need to be taken into account before choosing any colour scheme. If you have a blank canvas, the same principle applies. I would always suggest getting your static items first, your big purchase pieces. So your kitchen needs to be nailed, your flooring, your tiling. What is the splashback? What is my tiles in my bathroom? What are my tiles in my hallway? What's the carpet going to be like? Am I going to do a statement piece with a sofa? All of those need to be taken into consideration before choosing any colour palette. So you have to work with what you have. So here it makes it very simple working with the signature collection because all, all of these colours are put into palettes of three anyway. They're th three O's of colours using a light colour right through to a mid-tone, right through to a dark tone. So looking at the subtle shadow here, if you pick a neutral white or an off-white, in this case I've chosen a true grey, which is a black and white mixed together, has no undertones. A mid-shadow then is a darker shade of colour one. And that traditionally can be used for your walls. So you might reverse it and say, I want to use that for my trims and use the subtle shadow for the walls. Pure shadow then in this instance is a colour that either contrasts, harmonises or tones with colour too. So in this case it's a tonal colour scheme we're looking at. But of course greys being really versatile you can mix them with quite a, a number of different darker neutrals as well. 
So again, another um, really good colour palette to work with is your Moda collection. And this image is from our Wild Elements range. And again, there's 25 beautiful colours that cur are curated into five lovely colour palettes that make it really simple. So in this instance, we've shown you Backdrop, which is a beautiful true grey used on the walls. Um, we've used our Retro Rust for our lighting, our floor to ceiling lamp and also our table lamp. And we've used Tilbury Teal purely as an accessory being our occasional pieces of furniture here and our truest grey used for the trims being the skirting and the, the fireplace surround. So again, I just want to mention that we've our beautiful new Dulux um, 2021 colour card is in stores at the moment. Uh, definite must. There's some fantastic little hints and tips in there, particularly for painting wood, which is huge this year. Lots of bathroom tips on how you can be braver with your bathrooms. Um, lots of tips in there and it's a Bible of information. And again, of course, all our colours within that range can be mixed into different paint finishes. So just to, to, to show you, I suppose, where you can use your three or four, your five color palettes and to give you some inspirational shots as to where you can use them. So painting the woodwork the same color as the wall. And for anybody who tuned into the home of the year recently, the last two episodes have really shown um, you know, wood and walls being the same colour and certainly from the volume of queries we're getting in through our um, social platforms at the moment, people are really up for this now. Um, and here I think the image on the left with the staircase and the walls, all that same colour are beautiful. And again on the right, the image of the ceiling, it really opens up that space. And sometimes we, we feel, you know, by painting a darker colour, we're going to lose a lot of that space. In fact, it heightens the ceilings, it widens the areas, in particular for that hallway, it was really appropriate to use that colour there. So create a bold statement by using a darker colour on the woodwork. And again, this is a huge trend at the moment where people are putting in a lot of wooden panelling into lots of open spaces. And you can see around this image on the right here, um, we've used uh, pure jute for the wooden panelling, mid jute for the walls. And again, it's going up the stairs and we've really framed that woodwork in that space and made it actually, instead of a transient area, which is a hallway in general, people tend to forget about their hallways. It's, it can be really a wow factor because it's the first room in your home that you effectively enter in. And then the image on the left, obviously, again, our trims, skirtings, architraves, doors are done in pure haze. So using a traditional white trim on woodwork is always fresh. It's always a classic. So it's something as well that I would never forget about, particularly if you're using a dark colour and you don't want to be brave enough to go with the dark colour on the trims and the architraves and the doors. White, a pure brilliant white is always amazing. We have a really good off-white as well in our signature collection called Signature White. And it's a really good one if you feel you don't want that starkness of our the clinicalness I suppose of a pure white you can go with a night off white it's really good because it doesn't contain that much yellow and it's quite crisp as well so use white with a deeper neutral on doors. So in this instance here, this is a great little tip if you've actually got a smaller um, space in your home and you can't really get colour on the walls or the ceilings or your architraves, but you can get colour on the doors. And this is a lovely one here where we've used um, night and day and we've used uh, mid cinder on one of the doors in this hallway. Again, kitchen, consider painting your kitchen units, which has been a trend really for the last two years. And I don't think it's going to die a death yet. Everybody is looking to upgrade their homes at the moment and the kitchen is the, 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 the right starting point to do this. So here we've used, uh, again, pure jute and we've used mid pebble in this one. So a lovely idea is to think of the fifth wall in your house, which is your ceiling, and it's often forgotten. Um, a really good one is period homes where you do have that extra two feet in your ceiling being 11 foot, 12 foot ceilings. So it's to bring the ceiling down to maybe um, create that colour and you can ground the room and a little bit make it a little bit more cosier. So I think it works really well with Aston Green in the ceiling here. And the image to the left then, which is that, 
that um, lovely orange door. We've done it in Serendipity, um, or sorry, in Russian Doll, actually. And the ceiling also is in it. So it really elongates that room and creates a lovely focal point with the, the flooring as well. It really picks up that orange element. So again, play with colour as a statement wall. Again, I wouldn't be a huge fan of statement walls, but I think where they really uh, play their part is in an open plan space. And particularly when um, I have a lot of clients coming to me with open plan at the moment, which would have been really been a massive rectangular box that they would have built a few years ago and didn't really think of zoning the spaces. And now they want to come back and zone those areas. So a great way to zone them is with colour and with creating statement statement areas. So zoning out your living space, your dining space and your kitchen space. And it can be very simple with either taking the pop of colour from your island and bring it down to the other end of the room, which would automatically reduce the length of that space and make it feel as if it's more cohesive and consistent. And use a dark neutral to create impact. Again, this is all over trend at the moment, using dark colours to create a cosy and a cocoon feel in a room that may not necessarily have a huge amount of light. That's OK. Um, you know, whereas before we would have been so desperate to get light even into north facing rooms. Now, really a trend and it works really well is to get a dark colour into a space. And this can work really well, particularly for a bedroom. It doesn't have to be a functional space. You are sleeping in that space. The same with the sitting room. If you feel you want to cocoon that den and it's a room away from everybody else, that's a great way to do that. And the same with using dark colours for bathrooms now um, you know they're, they're areas that we're not spending a huge amount of time in and where you can get pops of colour and then create a focal point it doesn't have to be a whole room of colour it could be just to highlight the chimney um, the fireplace within the chimney breast, you know, that's highlighted there with the cushions and the little occasional table beside the chair, again, to zone in a Pacific area um, with, and I think it works really well with the, the, the triangle and the, the beautiful piece of furniture done in the same colour. So Tulux Colour of the Year this year is Brave Grand and I think really appropriate for the times we're in. It's a really robust um, colour with its warm earthy tones. It's a, a kickback to nature. It gives us a feeling of stability, growth and potential and provides a firm foundation for change and creativity in our home, which I think is really apt when we're all spending so much time in our homes now and our homes for the first time ever have to be really, really functional. They work hard and they work as a functional space for both work, for sleeping, for eating. It's now our gym. It's now everything to us. So people now more than ever are looking for cocooning colours within their home to make them feel safe and happy. Just have a little video here to, to run. Um, hopefully my video will run now. So I've taken off the sand purely just to um, talk through the different elements. So there's four beautiful colour schemes within this range. And you can see everything on the Dulux, um, www.dulux.ie, which will go through all of the different colours. So the Expressive Colour Palette is one. The Trust Colour Palette is another one. You've got your Timeless Colours. And then you've also got the Earth Colours. So a beautiful um, palette of colours there. So just to go through some dark neutrals remain, this was a trend that really came to fore last year in 2020. And it's something actually that is really continuing on to this year. And I spoke about it briefly in the uh, previous few slides was looking at dark colours for your skirtings, your architraves, your doors, your walls, and even the radiator in this instant, um, rich and earthy tones all over. And a fantastic paint finish that we have is the diamond, Dulux Tray Diamond Actual, which is an amazing one for walls and wood. And that's where you can achieve the same colour on the walls and on the wood. Brilliant colour uh, for a brilliant uh, paint for wooden panelling as well. A great paint for actually bathrooms because it's water repellent. 
And then another trend which is very much in, in, in prevalence this year as well, it was huge last year, was the biophilic design. So it's bringing the outside in and it's reconnecting, reconnecting ourselves with nature. So be it green on your walls, on your sofa, paintings or actual planting, it's a huge, huge trend. And then just a little video on the uh, Visualizer app. Again, I've taken the sound off here so I can talk through it. It can be downloaded from the App Store. It's a really good little tool if you're starting from scratch and you're getting really, um, I suppose, frustrated with the amount of testers you're using. Have a look at the Visualizer app first before you get any testers. And um, it's a great little tool for making everything really simple. And it gives you an idea, of course. It won't tell you exactly what the color is going to be like like 100% because obviously we're, we're all working on a virtual realm at the moment. I would always recommend getting testers. Um, and that's where I'm bringing you on to the roll up testers, which we introduced last year. Um, and again, I would always say test, 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 make sure you're testing two coats on, on a white um, piece of card, bring it around that space, test it with your furniture, particularly if you were buying furniture online at the moment, be really careful. It's like buying anything online. You really need to see the physical samples before you nail that overall color scheme. And then just lastly, before we go to questions and answers, I'd just like to say that obviously where you see you saw some in stores over the last five years, last year, obviously due to COVID, we've now um, brought ourselves online on a virtual platform. So we're on Instagram or on our Julix Facebook page. And that's a really quick method to get an answer to any of your queries. You can direct message us on, on Facebook. There's a team of colour consultants there. Um, and we also have a Julix Let's Track Colour. It's a free 30 minute uh, colour consultation that you can book online directly through our Dulux Facebook page. If after today you need some advice on anything, certainly we'd be happy to, to help you. So we'll just go to questions and answers and I'll stop sharing here and I'll come back. Thanks, Amanda. You're welcome. That was great. Thank you. There's uh, so much information there. I have a feeling that people are going to have to watch it back. <laughs> and, uh, uh, I have serious house envy after looking at all those gorgeous images. Um, Thank you. It's just amazing how well you can use colour in your house really, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. It's fab. Um, question just came in there actually. Um, what's your favourite white for an attic space? Okay, so I mentioned our signature collection there briefly in the presentation. Signature white is a really good one because it doesn't contain too much yellow. So it's quite contemporary. So again, a good idea for an attic space, which a lot of people are converting at the moment to home offices and to have it as an extra playroom for the kids, is painting out your ceilings, your skirtings, your architraves, your door into the attic and your walls all one colour. So that will open up that whole space and it won't feel if it, as if that apex roof is coming down on top of you. And it won't have that natural divide between a wall and a ceiling where there's very little wall anyway in an attic space or in a dormer or in a car cottage so to open up that whole ceiling and those all, all those walls I painted all in one color so signature white is a really good one for that perfect perfect um we actually had a few queries in by email in the last couple of days Amanda so I'll just run through those and they may be relevant to other people as well great um Michelle sent in a question she said she's painting a newly plastered exterior of her mm -hmm. house is there any sealant that you would recommend for her to put on before she paints it OK, so she doesn't need to do use any sealant um, and perhaps this is a presentation for another time with loads of uh, weather shield queries probably going to come in. So but yes, I'll address it. No problem today. So what she needs to do is she needs to water down her first coat of her Dulux weather shield. Uh, I think it's by one tenth, it'll, by 10 percent. It'll actually tell you all of that in the back of the tin. Um, and then she can go with her two coats of full coat paint on top of that. Oh. So, yeah, yeah. So, Michelle, if you haven't chosen a colour scheme for your house, certainly send us a DM of your house and we'd be happy to do a colour scheme for you there. Perfect. OK, um, so the next one is from Sinead. She said she's getting a new kitchen uh, with light grey uh, cabinet doors and a light oak worktop. She is um, looking for, she's changing her floors to gray. No, she didn't say if it's light gray or dark gray. 
um, and she's looking for recommendations for her wall colors. Okay, so greys can be really tricky. It's the, I suppose the top 10 questions we'd be dealing with all the time is greys. So I would need to know exactly what that grey in her units is and what, her, what the grey in her flooring um, is as well before I can recommend that. So I'd need to know whether that grey is a true grey when she looks at that cabinet and when she looks at the flooring, is it black and white? Is there any undertones? So if it has undertones, it's a totally different kettle of fish. So um, certainly Sinead, if you want to um, set up an appointment with us on, on the Let's Chat colour, and get us some photographs in of your flooring and your units. And in the meantime, if you can tell us exactly what grey that is, I'd certainly be able to help you there. So a first port of call for that would be the signature range has five families of grey. So within that, you'd have a grey with a blue undertone, which is Dolman. Rye has a green undertone. Cinder and Birch have a brown undertone. And Shadow is a true grey. So it's any one of those greys. OK, so... Um, that's a good starting point if she could find out exactly what that grey is certainly I'd be able to advise her um, in more detail then for her walls yeah okay so the best thing to do really is to get on the let's chat yeah yes yeah okay perfect um Bernie sent in a message about a small sitting room she has just done it up and she said it feels smaller than ever and she has a closed up fire and a chimney breast with a mahogany ornate built-in unit around it and she wants to paint them and she's thinking of like a pale pink but she's not too sure I think pink was was already a dominant color in that room previously Okay, so again, it depends on the other elements that she has in that room. If she has a, what colour is her sofa, her flooring. Um, so dealing with colour consultations online, clients need to be really specific. So before, um, when we were in stores, obviously, we had the luxury of dealing with everybody's actual samples. So the one tip I can give to anybody who is looking for a colour consultation online is be really specific on what you want. We're not mind readers. So to keep everything, uh, to give you the best advice possible, I need as much information as possible. So again, for, for Bernie, if she does pink, she can do blush pink by all means. It will make that room very feminine, though. If that's what she wants, that's absolutely no problem. So there's some amazing blush pinks from a collection we have called Mix Lab, and it's called Blush Noisette. It's from one to six. There's some lovely pinks there that all depends whether that fits in with the pink she has in the existing part of her room. Um, so that would be one tip. Another tip would be if she doesn't want to make it feminine and she wants to open up those units would be to go with a good neutral like a mid muslin. That's quite a good neutral and she could paint her units out of that. So therefore if she gets sick of pink, on her unit, she's not repainting her units down the line. She's just painting a wall or maybe changing a piece of furniture. So, you know, painting wood is really labor, labor intensive. So sometimes I would always advise keep your wood as neutral as possible where you can in rooms that you may get sick of if you have a very specific color, you know. OK, yeah, that's okay. good advice. I'd answers say. That. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've painted a few wooden bits myself and it is very labor intensive that's it for is. sure yeah, yeah, yeah definitely you'd want to really like the color that you're using yes yeah <clears throat> um yeah. Uh, uh, michelle just email or just uh put, put a question in there uh she says she's got a new build she has an open plan one and a half story ceiling which is south facing and it's her kitchen and uh, would you advise putting a color on the ceiling rather than white OK, so she could do that if she has a high ceiling there. That's a great area to have it. Again, I'd need to see the architecture of that room. And not every not every ceiling is conducive to colour. OK, so um, vaulted can work, but it has to work in with everything else. So, again, if Michelle wants to, to, to DM us on that and maybe with a photograph of that actual ceiling, what it looks like, we can certainly advise her better there. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. OK, um, Zach, I think you might have a couple of questions there if you just want to give us one or two before we finish up. Yeah, um, I would love some advice on choosing a colour scheme for the exterior of my house. The front is red brick. OK, so red brick we get a lot of um, all the time. And what I would say is um, red brick 
has warm brown undertones in it anyway. So we need to work with what, what colours are in that brick already. So greens work. So some lovely greens would be Knocknery, Olive Garden from Weathershield. Warm greys work and that's a cashel clay. It has a warm brown undertone to it. Um, another one that would work would be your Portland is a grey with a green undertone. So you, again, lots of people are looking for greys outside as much as grey inside. So not every grey will work with what you have. So again, with red brick, you need to be looking at greys with a green undertone, greys with a brown undertone. You need to be looking at beige, sandy colours or greens work very well. OK, actually, Amanda, I've been wondering this myself about grey. When do you think that phase is going to be over? <laughs> I mean, can you predict the future? Uh, I, I think but... at this stage, I'm not a particular, particularly uh, huge fan of grey because I suppose I'm specifying it every day. Um, what I do like is I like the classicness and the timelessness of the warm greys that are considered greasious, be, greasious because they have so perfectly greish from Moda, Little Heron from Moda, Mid Cinder, Mid Birch from um, Flake Dam and even a darker element of that. They all work very well with the majority of light and in most areas in your home and they're classic. So it doesn't hit you when you come in the door. It's a warm grey, whereas you're very much contemporary greys. You're very stuck to them if you choose a kitchen as a solid grey. There's very little uh, movement you have from left to right by choosing any other colours because it's such a prominent piece in your kitchen. So a lot of people are choosing solid grey at the moment for the kitchen, your typical island unit um, in probably a navy, which is huge at the moment. So you are restricting yourselves while it's very much in trend at the moment. Um, long term, it's not classic because long term, I feel grey will be will be like magnolia where we've come from in a home. Now, it's got a lot of years yet. There's certainly no uh, no abating to it yet for as long as people want it. Um, it will be there on trend. But people, I think now are realising after painting all their homes grey. Oh, my God, my home has suddenly changed from an off white and a cream or a magnolia. And now it's all grey. So. Mm. So grey isn't isn't uh, for everybody. Uh, what I would say is choose your greys wisely and where people um, tend to trip up is particularly in a new build or a renovation, they tend to buy everything in isolation from each other. So if you are buying a warm grey flooring, stick with your warm grey flooring throughout. Don't be changing up your flooring to a blue grey in another room and a grey with a green undertone in another room because that is going to make it very difficult to um, select colours that will make the whole property and the flow of the building cohesive. Yeah. Um, is the so flow it's, very it's important, tricky. Amanda, there? Flow is huge. And we're getting so many queries at the moment. And I feel so sorry for so many people because they're doing bills during the COVID lockdown. And where they started a build at the beginning of last year, they're still in that build, unfortunately, because of all the various restrictions. So uh, they are trying to buy their flooring online, their furniture online, their sofa online. So, you know, these are all big purchase items. And I, I still feel you need to look at the, the pieces, you need to feel the fabric, you need to sit on the sofa. Um, you know, it, it, for for the sake of waiting, I would, you know, your sofa is going to cost you three to five thousand, your kitchen probably a minimum of 10 to 20. These are massive purchases and a lot of people are panicking about paint. So paint is the cheapest form of interior design, but always the one that is cut on budget because they've run out or they, you know, they haven't selected their, their elements correctly in terms of everything has been bought in isolation. So when you're doing a colour scheme for a home, think of every room connects into each other and every room needs to flow. But also with that flow, what will give me the maximum space in that room? And definitely choosing the same flooring throughout is number one. Um, and then it, it means that everything will flow together and you'll have a better chance of a better result at the end of the day with colour schemes. Yeah. yeah, yeah. OK, OK. Um, Ashleen just sent in a question there. It's she says for des she's designing an open plan kitchen, living, dining. Do you recommend varied color schemes or to keep it all the same for continuity? She's planning a dark blue navy kitchen and wooden flooring. 
She would like to be brave with colour, but leaning towards neutrals for the larger space. She's wondering, what do you think? Okay, so her kitchen is quite prominent there. Um, yeah, again, you can be brave in an open plan because you have the space and you ultimately have the light because the light of an open plan, you probably got floor to ceiling windows anyway. So light isn't an issue. So you can afford to go darker colours without um, uh, minimising the space that you're in. So I would say if you're open for brave uh, colours, go with brave. Absolutely. Yeah. And there's some beautiful dark neutrals within the signature collection to go with that yeah mm. yeah again okay maybe she can check out the website and, and yes maybe, uh, yes get in touch yeah with absolutely you, you know to... send us a message yeah. yeah 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 perfect um should we take one more maybe um zach do you have another one there yeah uh my sitting room is north facing i want to create a cozy and inviting space i'm not afraid of color do you have any suggestions so a similar question to the last customer there, um, which would be so cozy and cocooning, north facing. I'd forget about trying to bring light in there any or sunlight in there anyway. You, you don't have any. So a sitting room is a restful place, a cocooning. So some great colours from our signature collection for that is Aston Green or Greenwich, two beautiful greens. You've got Baltic uh, from Signature Gatsby Blue from Moda, Tilbury Teal, a beautiful teal from Moda. All of those colours will create a lovely cocoon feel. Navies like Night Series, Fine Line Topography, real dramatic colours. And again, you know, if she's not afraid of colour, go with it, you know, um, and think about having a, a, a contrasting colour in that sofa. So the sofa could be a mustard, the rest of the walls could be green. Now mustard might be the only pop punch of colour in that room, it doesn't matter. Um, and then have the green for the walls, you know, but then she could bring in a mustard lamb shade if she wants to bring mustard in with that. Mustards or pinks work, blush pinks work beautifully with greens as well. So uh, blush pink sofa would be beautiful with green. You're planting in your green. So it's really looking at your biophilic design there and having some inspirational images from that will bring that whole scheme together for you. Yeah. Um, actually, it's funny that she should have asked that because I have an office which is north facing as well. And I, like you were saying earlier, I was always obsessed with how to get light in there. Mm. Um, and I like the fact that you say forget about that and yeah. sort of embrace the darkness. But I was wondering um, if you do go brave there in a space like that and, and you know, paint it quite dark and make it cozy. What do you do about lighting then? What do you recommend so, there? So for an office space, so a sitting room space, I suppose it's a space where you're going to relax. You probably will have a tall lamp behind your, your occasional chair. You'll probably be reading a book. You'll be looking at TV. It doesn't matter that light. Light is not, uh, it's not a functional space. So an office is a functional space where you need that calm and, tra and tranquility to actually be able to think. You also need it to block out this LED light from your, your screen as well, your blue light. So what I would be saying in an office space is, cozy isn't the way to go because it's functional so um what what i would do there is look at a color like um tranquil dawn a beautiful grayed off green is a lovely one renaissance is another lovely color robin egg is a beautiful color for north facing rooms and it doesn't darken the room so what you could do is use a good off white like white horse or little heron which is a lovely um warm gray those colors work really well with any of those i've suggested but they, they cozy the room up, but you still can function in that space. So what you don't want, I suppose, with the north facing room is to do a, a dark green wall ceilings everywhere. And then suddenly you can't see your screen. So you need to always think of the purpose and the functionality of a space before you tackle a color scheme. You know, like okay. in a kitchen, you wouldn't recommend a really dark color in an area where you're chopping vegetables or you need to physically be able to see things, you know, um, the, you know, the same in a doctor's surgery, you know, things like that. So we always need to think of the functionality of a space before we consider color. But certainly in your office space, I think, uh, is that the office you're in at the moment, Rona? No, it's not. This is actually my landing um, because there's so many of us here <laughs> working and okay. studying from home where okay. uh, every space in the house has been utilized. So, yeah. yeah. Well, if you need advice on that, 
uh, check out the, the Let's Chat Colour of Rona yeah. and you can do a little test shot on that. But I think a robin egg, I think, could be a nice one for you. It's a lovely grade off duck egg blue, but mm. it's contemporary, works really well with whites as well. Oh, yeah, I love yeah. that colour, actually. I'll yeah. definitely check that out. Thank you. Yeah, you're so, welcome. So um, before we finish, oh, hang on. One just popped in there. We'll, we'll do this before we go. Um, Luca sent in a message, a light oak kitchen and ceiling. What colour recommended for grey coat plaster walls? So the okay. kitchen is light oak. And okay, and he's grey coat plastered. So he's looking for a ceiling colour, is it? I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, so with that, so it seems like a contemporary kitchen. I would go with the white there. I would go with either um, your signature white or a pure brilliant white there. It's very contemporary. If he's looking at coated plaster, he needs to keep a contemporary look and feel. Yeah. Okay, so white there. Yeah, yeah. great. Well, that makes yeah. sense. Okay. Um, Amanda, that's great. Thank you so much. We, we go through loads of questions there, actually. Um, so just remind everybody again, if you don't mind, where to go to, to get um, a bit more information and to talk to you guys. Sure. So so we'll probably be doing um, uh, some store days with stores. So obviously like yourselves and the, probably the not so distant future. But um, you can check out our Julux Facebook page and there is a little um, a little image that says, would you like some help? Uh, book you once you book on that, you will see a list of times and dates. Once you get that, you get assigned a 30 minute slot. We then send you information. We will need your mobile number to be able to contact you because it is a call. Um, and we will put a little spec together for you once we've done a consultation of all your paint finishes, your colours we've selected and just so many hints and tips that you do need. So it's a 30 minute consultation. You can book it through Instagram. It automatically goes to our Facebook page, uh, but everything will be done through Facebook. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. And also okay. just to say to everyone that we have um, experts in each of our stores, Kinsale, Bandon and Enniskeen, and they're really they know their stuff when it comes to paint mm -hmm. and finishes and accessories okay. and they can really help uh, as well. So yeah. um, thanks so much to everyone uh, for attending. Thank you to Amanda for all thanks, of your Brona. knowledge and expertise. Thanks, and thanks a lot, Zach, for your help. And uh, that's it. So, guys, thanks a million. You can send any questions to, to me at marketing at about this or about other webinars. Um, and as Amanda said, check out their Facebook page and the Judox website. Okay. That's great. Thanks, thanks a lot, lot guys. Thanks. See you. Bye. Take care now. Bye-bye. Thanks. Bye.